Autobots Inferior. The Devil's Footprints is an unsolved mystery about a set of strange tracks that appeared in the newly fallen snow in Devon, England in 1855. It was the 9th of February, 1855, when the Devil's Footprints first appeared. The townspeople in country Devon, England, woke up that morning to find thousands of mysterious tracks in the snow. The tracks resembled footprints left by a clover hoof and they extended through an area that covered several towns. The mysterious footprints were found to go up the sides of walls, into gardens, onto roofs, up and down the sides of fences, where it was impossible for any person or animal to go. Some of the tracks just came to a stop in the middle of nowhere, as if the owner had suddenly vanished. Some stopped abruptly and continued after a long break, and others stopped at high walls, only to continue on the other side, leaving the snow on top of the wall untouched. A set of footprints even went across the River X, continuing on the other side, as if whoever or whatever had left them had passed straight across the water. A feeling of deep unease spread through the people who lived in the area, and many believed that the footprints could only be made by the devil himself. There were also rumors about sightings of a devil-like figure in the Devon area during the scare. Many townspeople armed themselves and attempted to track down the beast responsible without success. There were those who refused to believe that the footprints had been made by the devil. They came up with their own theories. Some say the townspeople might have been nuts and imagined the whole thing. Others thought the tracks could have been left by hopping mice. Some theorized that a balloon might have floated across the landscape trailing a rope, making odd tracks in the snow on its way. Yet more people say it could have been caused by kangaroos who escaped from the zoo. Although the footprints look nothing like the tracks a kangaroo would leave. Do you really think these theories are likely? Perhaps it is easier to believe in unlikely explanations rather than accept that the devil visited Devon one cold winter's night and stalked through the towns looking for sinners to drag the hell? Today, the devil's footprints remain an unsolved mystery and a strange phenomenon is still unexplained. Shout out to Mr. Therizinosaurus for suggesting this video. Soundwave Superior Autobots Inferior Russian researchers in the late 1940s kept five people awake for 15 days using an experimental drug-based stimulant. They were kept in a sealed environment to carefully monitor their oxygen intake so the gas didn't kill them since it was toxic in high concentrations. This was before closed circuit cameras, so they had only microphones and 5 inch thick glass porthole size windows into the chamber to monitor them. The chamber was stocked with books, cots to sleep on but no bedding, running water and toilet, and enough dry food to last all five for over a month. The test subjects were political prisoners deemed enemies of the state during World War II. Everything was fine for the first five days. The subjects hardly complained, having been promised falsely that they would be set free if they submitted to the test and did not sleep for 30 days. Their conversations and activities were monitored, and it was noted that they continued to talk about increasingly dramatic incidents in their past, and the general tone of their conversations took a darker aspect after the fourth day mark. After five days, they started to complain about the circumstances and events that led them to where they were, and started to demonstrate severe paranoia. They stopped talking to each other and began alternately whispering to the microphones in one-way mirrored portholes. Oddly, they all seemed to think they could win the trust of the experimenters by turning over their comrades, the other subjects in captivity with them. At first, the subjects suspected this was an effect of the gas itself. After nine days, the first of them started screaming. He ran the length of the chamber, repeatedly yelling at the top of his lungs for three hours straight. He continued attempting to scream, but was only able to produce occasional squeaks. 
the researchers postulated that he had physically torn his vocal cords. The most surprising thing about this behavior is how the other captives reacted to it, or rather, didn't react to it. They continued whispering to the microphones until the second of the captives started to scream. The two non-screaming captives took the books apart, smeared page after page with their own feces, and pasted them calmly over the glass portholes. The screaming promptly stopped. So did the whispering to the microphones. After three more days passed, the researchers checked the microphones hourly to make sure they were still working, since they thought it was impossible that no sound could be coming with five people inside. Have you ever heard of the Disney Mirror Ritual? Don't be fooled by its name, or its location at the happiest place on Earth. It's a fairly dangerous ritual, with a high chance of getting caught. Granted, the payoff is fairly high. It is not known why or how this ritual came to be at Disney World. It is said that each of the Disney parks have its own unique ritual, with the same consequences for failure. But the one at Disney World seems to have the most known information. This is a mirror ritual. Mirror mythology is well invoked in Disney stories. Think Beauty and the Beast, Snow White, One Hour in Wonderland, and such. I'm sure you think such a ritual would take place at the Haunted Mansion or one of the spookier rides, but you would be wrong. The main part of the ritual takes place at Cinderella's castle, rough, roughly the epicenter of the Magic Kingdom. The night part of the ritual must take place between 2 and 4 a.m. To complete this ritual, you will need three items. A piece of chalk, a knife that had its handle broken off, in other words, simply the blade. The type of knife does not matter, but as you will need to sneak this in past security, you might want a smaller blade. You can conceal it in your shoe or some other hiding place. A broken shard of mirror, roughly the size of your palm. You might want to find a pre-broken shard if you believe in the superstition of seven years of bad luck. The ritual begins during daytime hours of the Magic Kingdom section of Disneyland. During the day, you must hide the three items in separate areas of the park. The areas to choose from are Main Street USA, Liberty Square, Fantasyland, Adventureland, Frontierland, and Tomorrowland. Study the map of the park and decide which routes would be the easiest to travel undetected. Do not pick distances you can't manage. Keep in mind that the area around Cinderella's castle will be the most heavily patrolled by security. While there, while there are security cameras in the park, don't worry about them. Something about the ritual makes them seem to malfunction. Before hiding the items, head to the tunnel going through Cinderella's castle. Be careful here. There are some Disney staff that are aware of the ritual and know to keep an eye out for those attempting it. Hide the chalk in your hand pick up a brick you are able to reach at You know, I just realized I haven't seen your pals in a while. I wonder if they're trying to get the jump on me. Ah, he knows! Oh. Ah! Ah! No! <laughs> Better luck next time, fuckboy.
completely insane. I would know. What? What the fuck? Surprise, motherfucker! Ah She commandeered the room in the basement of her dorm as soon as she realized she would have to pull an all-nighter in order to prepare for tomorrow's final exam. Her roommate, Jenna, liked to go to bed early, so she packed up everything she thought she would need and went downstairs to study. And study. And study some more. It was 2 o'clock when she realized she left one of her textbooks upstairs on her bed. With a dramatic sigh, she rose and climbed the stairs slowly to her third floor dorm room. The lights were dim in the long hallway and the old boards creaked under her weary tread. She reached her room and turned the handle as softly as she could, pushing the door open just enough to slip inside so that the hall lights wouldn't wake her roommate. The room was filled with a strange metallic smell. She frowned a bit, her arms breaking out into chills. There was a strange feeling of malice in the room, 
as if a malevolent gaze was fixed upon her. It was a mind trick. The old nighter was catching up with her. She could hear Jenna breathing on the far side of the room, a heavy sound, almost as if she had been running. Jenna must have picked up a cold during the last tense week before finals. She crept along the wall until she reached her bed, groping among the covers for the stray history textbook. In the silence, she could hear a steady drip, drip, drip sound. She sighed silently. Facilities would have to come to fix the sink in the bathroom. Again. Her fingers closed on the textbook. She picked it up softly and withdrew from the room as silently as she could. Relieved to be out of the room, she hurried back downstairs, collapsed into the overstuffed chair, and studied until 6 o'clock. She finally decided that enough was enough. If she slipped upstairs now, she could get a couple hours sleep before her 9 o'clock exam. The first of the sun's rays were beaming through the windows as she slowly slid the door open hoping not to awaken Jenna. Her nose was met by an earthly metallic smell a second before her eyes registered the scene in her dorm room. Jenna was spread eagled on top of her bed against the far wall, her throat cut from ear to ear and her night dress stained with blood. Two drops of blood fell from the saturated blanket with a drip drip noise that sounded like a leaky faucet. Scream after scream poured from her mouth, but she couldn't stop herself any more than she could stop wringing her hands. All along the hallway, doors slammed and footsteps came running down the passage. Within moments, other students had gathered in her doorway, and one of her friends gripped her arm with a shaking hand and pointed a trembling finger towards the wall. Her eyes widened in shock at what she saw. Then she fainted into her friend's arms. On the wall above her bed, written in her roommate's blood, were the words, Aren't you glad you didn't turn on the light?